Hello, my name is Bill Hayes, and I'm the chief person behind PocketPredator.com Slingshots. Today, I'm going to give you all the information you're going to need to get you up and running with your new slingshot. Everything from uh, the type of uh, backstops which you can use to shoot at, uh, the type of targets you can shoot at, uh, the type of slingshots you can shoot at, the different ways in which you can shoot, different banding, different ammo, how to reband your slingshot, and how to tie patches on the bands at the end. If once everything breaks, it, because because like anything else, bands will eventually wear out and break. Okay, first of all, we're going to start with the backstop. Okay, the backstop which you use is uh, generally going to consist of a box or a box-like structure, and in here I have a bar, and I just simply hung T-shirts on it. The bot, it's important that you do not uh, tie the bottom of, this, of the t-shirts down. That allows something to hit it and to absorb it like a catcher's mitt. And that's what you're after. The ball will absorb into this material, then it will drop down into the, into the bucket down there. Uh, the type of ammo you use, you can use anything from marbles to lead to, uh, to steel balls. A lot of people like to use uh, steel balls because they can put a magnet on a stick and they can pick them up then. And it's a lot easier on their back. Uh, targets you can shoot at. You can shoot at cans. You can shoot at uh, uh, marbles. <laughs> you can shoot at uh, ammo itself. You can shoot at uh, cards, uh, matches, anything you like. The, the more advanced the person, generally the smaller the target. Now, whenever you're looking at a target, like this is a, this is a can right here, do not focus on the can. Don't see the can. Instead, look at the can this way, okay? So if I'm going to be shooting at this from over there, I will uh, try to pick out the smallest part of the can that I can focus on, okay? So that little point right there of the can, I'll try to get it centered. I'll aim at that little point right there on the can. I'll visualize, focus only on that little point right there, and that's the part I'll aim at. You aim at the smallest target or the smallest thing you can focus on within the target that you're aiming at, okay? So this is my target, that's my real target, it's the little tiny point within the target, okay? Very simple, very simple uh, thing there, then the concept, and that is very simple, it's, it's called uh, aim small, miss small. So I'm gonna aim at the smallest thing I can see on the can and shoot. Now, generally, for slingshot shooting, we go from about 10 meters. This is 10 meters from here to the can. I have everything marked off on that fence back there. That's how I know automatically. Next thing, shooting a slingshot. There are two basic ways in which to shoot a slingshot. That is with the forks up or the forks to the side. I prefer shooting the forks to the side. Other people will prefer shooting them up. Today I'm going to show you how to shoot with them to the side because that's what I'm most proficient at and you can use the same concepts, the same basic concepts that you use shooting to the side as you can use shooting with the forks up so you can switch back and forth if you prefer. How do you shoot a slingshot? Well it's very very simple. If you're right handed and you hold the slingshot in your left hand like this, you want to grip it so that your hand comes like this right here and you grip it so your thumb is braced right under the fork tips here and your finger is under it like this. Do not hold it like a hammer like this, okay? Don't hold it like that. For very small hands they might be able to do that. They can put their finger in a little hole there or something like that and they might be able to grip it but uh, it's much preferred to shoot with the thumb and the index finger gripping it up higher which gives you greater leverage and more accuracy because it gives you more stability. Now, I'm holding my left hand, hold it to the side. What do I do next? Well, I need to grip the pouch in such a way that allows me the most accuracy. Different people, of course, will grip differently. If you're an archer, you'll probably automatically uh, gravitate towards this type of a hold right here, to where your thumb is on top right here, and you will pull back to your cheekbone or something similar. So you're here like this, you'll probably pull back like this, and that'll be your full draw length, would be something like uh, 31 inches or something like that. If you are uh, not stuck into just archery, you might pull back further. 
So, a thing called semi butterfly. What they mean by butterfly? Let me let me explain that first. Butterfly is simply the position in which you are. This is a full butterfly here because I look like a butterfly with my wings expanded. Okay. This is semi butterfly or half butterfly, and this is a standard archery hold. You might start with a standard archery hold to where you're shooting like this with a standard archery hold type move. Thumb on top, pointed just like this. Bands line up under your dominant eye. Aiming at your target and shooting. That's, that's more than fine, okay? Once you have uh, achieved the standard archery hold, then you might graduate to a three-quarter butterfly type like this where it's extended. The further you pull your bands, the more power you have because it's a longer period of acceleration okay, on whatever ammo you're using. The period of acceleration counts a lot more than the power of the bands themselves. So if I have to accelerate for uh, 55 inches as opposed to 30 inches, if I have the same draw weight back here as I do from here, this is going to be way more powerful. The period of acceleration is much more powerful and much, much greater uh, influence on how powerful the shot is than the uh, strength of the bands themselves. Okay, now how do you aim? You aim a slingshot if you're using the side waves like this, and of course, when you receive your slingshot, it's going to be banded up with the uh, with the bands like this over the top uh, and through the forks. Okay, so it's going to be going through the forks like this. The ammo will pass through the forks. So you're holding here, and you're shooting like this. Now some people will hold their slingshot to where they hold the thumb here. And some people will hold it like a pinch movement here to get it as flat as possible. Either way is fine, because the bands don't care. Whenever you shoot, you're going to pull back either to your uh, to your anchor point or beyond, but either way, it doesn't matter. You're going to still do the same thing. Push out, pull up, and as you pull up, you're expanding the bands out, okay? Tilt your head over your, over your band so that they appear as one underneath your dominant eye so that they appear as one underneath your dominant eye. Now it's important that you uh, learn the technique of pushing out and pulling up before you put your head down because if there's any imperfections in the bands and they were to snap, it will snap you in the face when you reach full draw sometimes. Like uh, for example these bands right here. This bands right here have a little cut in it right here. I don't know where it came from but it does anyway. That is the weak point on the band, and what will happen is, as I'm pulling back here, eventually what's going to happen is I'm going to pull back, and it's going to split and then snap at that point. But I'm going to go ahead and get this video done before then. Now I'm going to show you how to reband these and then put pouches on it and everything else. Okay, so whenever I want to shoot, first thing I do is I imagine that I'm holding a rifle, okay? I see my target, I lift up my rifle, I put my cheek on the buttstock, tilting my head over it, see my target, my feet, I line them up just like I am holding a rifle, okay? Right here. That's where I'm comfortable holding a rifle. That's also where I'm going to be comfortable holding a slingshot. Feet don't move. Take your slingshot, push it out, pull it back, lift it up, same as your target, and fire. That's simple. Okay, now, the holds what you use to fire with, okay? So you have different pouch grips you can use. You can use a pouch grip of, like I said before, like this. You can use it to the side like this if you're pulling further beyond your cheek. This is what I prefer actually. Or some people will actually hold it upside down like this, okay, to where it looks like this. Again, the holds are this way, this way, and my preferred, I hold the ball there'll be a gap in the pouch right here, right, right there, and I'll hold the ball like this, and I will pull like that, and then my hold that I like to use is thumb to the side this way, where I'm gripping the ball, not the, not the pouch, and I hold it this way, and you'll see there's a gap in the pouch right there, 
and I pull back and then I fire. When I put it together, it looks like this. I push down, pull back, pull up to the target, and shoot. Okay, you know that little point I was talking about? <laughs> when you hit something on the point, <laughs> okay, this is what happens. Look at that right there. It, it splits the can right there and almost, almost cuts the can in half. So, what I did is I automatically focused, I automatically focused on that little point that was on the can, like I told you. Shoot it, and it busts the can almost in half right there really easily. Now, from your point of view, what that all looks like, let's see if there's a target over there. There's a, there's a little piece of wood over there. I'm going to aim at that little piece of wood, but I'm going to use you as the eye. <laughs> Hopefully I can hit it that way. Again, from here, you push out, pull up, aiming at the piece of wood. Hopefully you can see it. Oh, a little above it. Because I'm just guesstimating on elevation and stuff because I'm not actually have my own eye over it. Again, so I'm here I like, like that. I want to shoot. I'll push down, pull it all up, aiming at the target. Oh, right beside the little piece of wood. That's how it works, okay? Now I'm going to show you how to uh, band one of these up. So I'm going to put it on pause, we'll move it over there, and we'll band one of these up, and then I'm going to show you how to do the pouch on it as well, because once you do see a defect in your bands, like this one's where it's ready to split, go ahead and change it out. Don't, uh, don't work with it until it pops and maybe accidentally pops you in the face or something like that. Always check your bands. Always check and make sure that they are in good shape. No splits, no, uh, no deformities, no uh, defects, okay? All right, next we're going to go over and do the banding. Okay, eventually bands break, that's just a fact. We try to do everything we can to keep that down by smoothing out the, uh, smoothing out the insides of the forks so they're nice and smooth so there's less abrasion to the bands. We keep the forks wide enough so that they uh, don't impact quite as solidly. We round over everything and try to make it so that they glance off instead of hit with a solid blow as well. But they will wear out no matter what. So, what do you do? You have to learn how to tie a new band set on. Our slingshots are designed so that one side will always be more comfortable than the other side. On these, on these symmetrical ones like this, one side will be a little bit more, more comfortable to the hand than the other. This side over here is dished out a little bit. Okay, so for your finger to uh, ride like this, a little bit more uh, comfortably. And this side is also contoured here so that your thumb and your forefinger can fit in it like that a little bit more comfortably as well. Some people might find it more comfortable to go to the other side which will give you more of a forward type of a feel to the to the shot. I don't like it that much. I like it this way and this is the way I'm going to show you how to band it up. You simply lay your band on here. Now the, the uh, band length that you use is an important factor also, okay? If you just lay really long bands on there, you're not going to get a whole lot of performance out of it. For your draw length, if you anchor to your cheekbone and you pull out and you have a 30 inch draw length, for example, you're going to need to have a 6 inch active length on your bands, okay? For me, my draw length is 50 inches, so I need to have a 10 inch which is exactly one of my hand breadths, like this, of the inactive or, or the uh, loose part of the band here from the, from the tip to the pouch, 10 inches, and that's what I have right there, okay? So, we have a 10 inch active length that way. And again, if you've are if you're got a 30 inch, you would have it be about a 6 inch draw length, about like that right there. You can preserve some of your band by looping them onto itself like this, and then you can later on uh, then cut off that little extra right there. And then later on you can get one extra band use out of that. So anyway, you line up your band to where it's centered, and to when we pull away like this, it'll be nice and flat and uh, work properly. So everything is is aligned properly. Hold that in place there. You can use rubber band, tubing, anything like this. Something that's good and strong and won't break too easily. That's what you're after. It goes on there, it's one course. Now the rubber itself holds itself in place. 
Now if I were trying to preserve band, I could loop this over and then hold it in place like that, but I'm not worried about it for me. So I'm here, I pull it over, and I, I pull this to, to its maximum pull as I pull it over like that, okay? Generally you want to have uh, four to five courses that you run over, okay? Four to five courses that you pull over. So that's uh, four or five courses right there. There's another one, and like that. Now, there's a couple different ways in which you can get this last course done. You can take a piece of string. Okay. Just a plain old piece of string. Put a loop in it. Like this. Lay that across your bands. Pull that there. Then your final course here where that little tab is sticking over it like that. Stick it through the loop. Alright. And pull that carefully. And then you pull your piece of string out. And that'll leave a perfectly tied band with a little tab right here that you can untie it with easily. I pull that and the whole thing unravels and unties very easily. Now, after you tie on your band, you always want to make sure that it's good and strong and it's on there, on there good enough. So you, right here, you pull it to the max, just like that. Pull it to the max and make sure that it doesn't have any slippage at all, okay? Then, of course, you have to do the other side. The other side, on this one, I'm going to show you another way to do this. You take your little piece of rubber there. I'll do this a little quicker. That's on there. Okay. Take a pair of pliers. These are needle nose pliers. Lay them on there like this. This goes there. Open your pliers. Pulls it here. And pulls your loop in there like that. Okay. Now, again, you test this. You pull it out to its max. Make sure there's no slippage. No slippage. Good. That's that's properly done. On your bands, then after they're on there, then if from here you pull them out to their max to make sure that that they uh, don't break and there's nothing wrong with. There's no deformities, no defects. All right. That's how you tie up. A, that's how you tie a band set onto your uh, slingshot. You can tie it on. Uh, this way so it's shooting through the forks or you can tie it on so that it's uh, up like this around that way. Either way works fine. Now how do you tie a pouch onto a band? Okay because you'll want to uh, reuse these pouches. These pouches are really nice pouches that we use and they can be used for uh, four, five, six, maybe even up to ten band sets. The same pouch can be used for more rubber. Well, I'm going to show you the way I do it. And this is a pretty simple way. You have a jig right here. And this, these are uh, toggle clamps. See this? Now this toggle clamp right here is made so that there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, of a groove right here that you can feel it with your finger, but you can't see it probably in the camera. And there's a piece right here that acts like this. This pushes down and then it locks in place. Now when that does that, you see this here that holds the rubber in place like that very solidly. And that's what it does. That's all it's for. Now to tie a uh, pouch onto a band set, you take your band, pinch the tips together like this so that they're folded. Open your pouch up, make sure that it opens properly. Okay. A little pinch together pieces here. Puts that little so that the so that the uh, little point goes through the pouch this way. Pull it and notice that this has kind of an hourglass shape to it here, and that's that's important. Push it over itself like that. Okay. Pull it so that the bottom band is a little bit wider than the top band. See that? So this will loop over at the end. So I'm here like this. I close my 
my clamp on there. I push this out, and you don't want to pull this too tight. You want to pull it to where it can still, uh, you know, stretch somewhat. Okay. You can use a rubber band. You can use a. You can use flaxen string. You can use a cotton string. You can use anything on there. I like to use real thin tubing because it comes in rolls and it's quick and easy for us to use. That's why. Anyway, you tie that on there once, twice, up. Now from here, this goes under itself this way. Ties that tight. Holding this in place, goes back over it, and this causes a square knot to happen. Very simple, and that won't come loose. Then you just do the same process for the other side. And guys, I think that's pretty well it. Anything else you need to know? Anything else you need to know? Just uh, contact me, uh, and I'll uh, do my best to answer any questions. In this video, we've shown how to uh, do everything from uh, make a make a catch box, where all you do is just put a rod in there, and you put T-shirts hanging off of it that will absorb almost anything a slingshot can throw. Targets you can use, you can use targets anything from a from a soda pop can to a VA can to a match. You know, anything in between all works fine. The idea on that is you don't want something that uh, will uh, ricochet or bounce the shot off. You want something that will absorb the shot or the shot will destroy. Okay, you don't want something that will bounce, you know, bounce the shot back up, back towards you. Okay. Um, shooting, of course, you just uh, keep everything in line it up so that it's all underneath your dominant eye release when it's all in line and in line with the target very simple and of course we just went over band tying and uh, pouch tying techniques again if there's anything else let me know and we'll try to answer your questions thanks for watching you all have a good day